Welcome to the third introduction video for Multiphysics with IronCAD. In this video, I'll be discussing, discussing mesh density and mesh refinement. If I look at my current model and go to the mesh page and turn the mesh on, I can see that the mesh looks very coarse around the small cylinder. I'd like to refine this so that it's a better approximation to the original cylindrical shape. There are three ways to do this, two global ways and a local way that applies to local surfaces and or parts or edges. Um, to do the global mesh refinement, um, actually I'm going to make a copy of this first so I can compare it. So I'll go up here, right click on the analysis one to bring up the right click menu, click on copy simulation, click OK to give me a copy of my simulation. This copies the simulation except the results. The idea is that we're going to compare this with our previous one, so we don't need to copy the old results, which can be very large for some large simulations. So we'll go to the mesh, turn the mesh on. Here we have the same mesh. I go to mesh generation, and I want to reduce the mesh size, which will give me more elements. And I'm going to pick 0.3. Um, because the length of a 3D cube or volume or whatever, um, the volume goes like the length cubed. This means that the number of elements, if we go to half the size, we're going to get eight times the number of elements. So if I would have gone to 0.2 instead of 0.3, I would have gotten about eight times the number of elements. So you've got to be very careful in reducing the mesh size for 3D volumes. Here I'll go ahead and do generate. I'm starting with... Uh, this gives me my previous mesh size of 0.4, um, my previous number of elements, which is 200, which is 2,770, and the previous number of nodes, which is 766. I'll click on the generate to generate a new mesh, and I see that I now have a size of 0.3 and over 5,000 elements and over 1,425 nodes. But I do have better refinement here along the edge of this cylinder and also along the edge here of this cylinder. I can show you the next method. I'm going to go back to the original model because I want to copy the original parameters. Do copy sim and OK. Go to the mesh page. Go back to the mesh generation dialog. And this time I want to reduce the curvature refinement ratio. The curvature refinement ratio essentially is the mesh is going to be a straight line. The actual original surface could be curved. We want to change the, the largest distance between the mesh line and this true curve line. And so 0.1 means the largest distance we're going to allow is going to be 0.1 times the length of this straight line. So as we decrease this, it's going to increase the number of elements along curved surfaces and give us more elements along curved surfaces, but along flat surfaces, it shouldn't change things. So we change it to 0.1. We still have the original mesh size of 0.4, and we click on the Generate button. So as we can see, this gives us more elements here. We now only have um, 3,000 elements and fewer nodes, but we still got refinement where we wanted it around the curved surfaces. So that worked out pretty well, and it's a good approach if you have curved surfaces that you want to refine. It turns out it's not a great approach if you have a lot of blended edges with a small radii blend, so that uh, the problem is all of those will be refined. You probably are not really interested in getting all of those refined, and that will create a large number of mesh elements, which will mean it'll take a lot longer to solve. So we're going to look at the third method of increasing mesh refinement. And I'll go ahead and, oops, let me go back to the first one with uh, 0.4 and everything and then make a copy of this. OK, go back to my mesh menu. The third method allows me to add specific refinements to faces, edges, or even individual parts. So to do this, you click on the Add Refinement button, and it adds essentially a refinement leaf. You can have as many refinement leaves as you want, or a single leaf can refer to various parts of the model. So I'm going to click on this face right here. And uh, for mesh size, I'm just going to go to uh, 0.1 for the mesh size. Um, click Accept. 
Now I specified, let's see, okay, I need to redo the mesh is what the question marks means. Um, I can either do this by going to mesh generation and clicking the generate button, or this is a very quick model to solve. I might as well just go ahead and solve it. Actually, it created a lot of elements there. <laughs> it's, uh, let's go back to the uh, to the mesh, turn it on, and uh, this created a lot of elements, around uh, 14,000 elements. Let's see if we can go to a and it created a very fine mesh. You can see there's a mesh transition between the refined surface that I picked and the rest of the mesh. This is good for good FEA. You want this transition and it's also necessary for good meshing. Um, let's go back into refinement. I can click it again and I'm going to do the mesh size of maybe just 0.3 which was like my original one. Um, I didn't mention earlier but you can also specify a curvature refinement, which is going to be applied to where whichever surfaces, parts, or edges, as I said, you have selected for the refinement option. We go back to the mesh, um, and we can do, we have a refinement now of 0.3. We do auto solve. Okay, this is better. This gives us around 3,000 elements. Um, let me turn off the contouring, and we can see how we have a better mesh here. Um, we're back down to our old original mesh. If I go and show the original model here, results, here's the original mesh, and pretty close to the original mesh away from here, and yet it's nice and refined here. The uh, local refinement and the original mesh that had a coarse mesh there in the cylinder. So, oh, one other thing I want to tell you, you can also refine an entire part if you want. Let me go back to the refine menu and this refines at whatever mesh density we gave it on this surface and it gradually increases getting away from it. If we want to make this whole part so that it's refined at a 0.3 inch, then I'm going to click off of it to unselect everything, come down here to the selection filter, click on this, and go down and click on part. You couldn't see it because I scrolled below the bottom, but I clicked on part. Now when I click on this, it selects a part. You don't see F for face, E for edge, or N for node. It selects the whole part. So I click yes. I can do the auto solve to resolve it. And pretty much the same number of mesh elements. Um, turn off contouring and there's my mesh. So in this video we learned three different ways that you can refine the mesh. You can go to the <coughs> mesh dialog click on mesh de generation and reduce the mesh size and then use generate or use auto solve to completely solve the problem if you do use auto solve you have you should use the save only here i think it's probably a good idea if you're using the mesh generation menu to go ahead and do generate so you can see the mesh before it goes on with the rest of the solution um, the second method we looked at was to reduce the curvature refinement, which reduces the mesh size around curved areas in your model. The third method we looked at was to add a refinement leaf. Um, we did this from going to the mesh menu and do add refinement. That gave us a refinement leaf and we could refine specifically one surface or a part or some combination of these in our models. And uh, at this time, you probably have enough to go experiment on your own playing with FEA analysis. Let me point out that the interface for FEA analysis is pretty much these toolbars. We haven't discussed <laughs> anything other, or you really used anything other than this one. Um, and it's also these. Um, tree leaves here that you can click on to get various dialogues. You can add constraints, you can add different kinds of loads. Each of these has a right click menu, or most of them have a right click menu that allow you to do various things so we can disable that, um, which would not be a good idea since we don't have any other constraints in our model. Um, we can uh, delete it, which is a common operation after you for example, if we had some other constraint and we didn't need that anymore, we can right click on it and delete it. Um, so those are pretty much the options. Let's say we wanted to get rid of our refinement, so we just go in here and delete it. Yes to confirm that, and we got rid of our refinement. The question mark indicates that the mesh 
is no longer valid. Um, we can just click on auto solve to redo it. We should be pretty much back to our original course mesh because we took away our refinement things. So the toolbars on the left, the um, right clicking on on these things to get menus for specific things, the menu that right click menu that applies to the to the generally the, the full simulation. This is the about model preference, collapsing or expanding the tree, copying the sim or deleting the sim. Those are all available there. And um, we can also right click on this when we're doing, uh, when the mesh is shown. So when the mesh is visible, then um, you get option, the right click menu on the screen surface will give you options related to the FEA mesh. Um, we didn't talk about selections these represent FEA selections here so one of the options is to hide so if we select the big part we go over here and hide selected then that hides our FEA mesh so you can play with these play with the the, the um, toolbars over here play with adding boundaries and boundary conditions and loads and um, just get to know uh, multiphysics for iron cat a little bit better Thank you very much.